Okay, this is chapter 16, Respiratory Physiology. Uh, this is a review for the test, test number 4 in Bio 9. Uh, you're going to need to know the, the phys physics of respiration, i.e. ventilation, gas exchange, oxygen utilization. You're going to need to know the restructure of the respiratory system down through the uh, through the mouth into the trachea, into the bronchioles, into uh, the alveolar. You know what the alveoli, you need to know what type 1 and type 2 alveoli are and what they do, how oxygen uh, exchange and carbon dioxide exchange takes place. So you got trachea down, I'm not going to know the difference between a bronchial and a respiratory bronchial and uh, what the conducting zone versus, is versus the respiratory zone. Air, know the, uh, the pathway of air into the lungs, through the pharynx and on down. Know what the diaphragm does. Know how the muscles work. Uh, know about the fact that a, as your chest expands under Boyle's law, the gas uh, the pressure of the gas is inversely proportional to the volume. That's one of the laws you will have to know. And aspects of ventilation. Know how ventilation works when, you're, when your chest expands, what happens to the pressure compared to the atmospheric pressure, and when you exhale or your chest contracts, what happens. Uh, be able to use the, firm, the word or the elasticity in reference to the lungs and how that works, and surface tension. Uh, know about the use of a surfactant, and why, and uh, what happens. Why a, new, why a baby would need a surfactant, and what respiratory di disease of the newborn is, and why it happens. Know about the pressure differences between the lungs and the thoracic cavity that keeps the lungs expanded within the thoracic cavity. Know what a uh, collapsed lung is. Uh, know that uh, what pulmonary ventilation is, uh, what inspiration and expiration is, and how it works in relationship to the muscles, i.e. the diaphragm, the ribs, the intercostals, you don't need to remember all the muscles, but you need to know how they work and why it works and why you're able to breathe and not. Know what a pulmonary function test is, a spirometry, uh, tidal volume, vital capacity, inspiratory reserve, uh, residual volume, functional volume, total minute volume. I'm not going to ask you to calculate that. Know what the dead space is and why it's there. Uh, under pulmonary orders, be able to differentiate between asthma and emphysema and COPD and fibrosis. Know what, be able to know what they are and be able to tell the difference and why they happen. Gas exchange in the lungs takes place through diffusion. Uh, how does that work? What about the loading and unloading of oxygen and carbon dioxide? Know, be able to uh, know what, how that works, uh, how it works in the, uh, in the capillaries, not only in the lungs, but also in the uh, tissue. Know the different changes. I'm not going to ask you to do blood gas measurements, but know that it's, uh, we'll need to know that it's higher and have an idea of how much higher it is in arterial blood versus uh, versus venous blood and how much how much oxygen is exchanged through the capillaries yeah, it's a number that's given to you in the in the book um, know about the circulation and perfusion ratios If you have, uh, know that uh, part, what parts of the lungs or why the lungs might, uh, the veins or the capillaries in the lungs would 
constrict with low oxygen values as opposed to uh, as opposed to expanding as the rest of the capillaries in the in the heart or in the body might be. Uh, you know what ox oxygen nitro oxygen toxicity nitrogen narcosis decompression sickness is. Uh, you know about the pons and the medulla uh, in the central nervous system regulation of breathing, about the chemoreceptors, what, what sets them off, O2 or CO2 or pH or what sets off the chemoreceptors, and how do they react and how quickly do they react. Uh, peripheral chemoreceptors, again, uh, know what, what they're looking for and what causes them to, uh, to react quickly. Okay, we have, uh, know what sleep apnea is, uh, hemoglobin, know what the structure of hemoglobin, uh, how many beta chains, how many alpha chains, how many irons, what the iron does, know the difference between oxyhemoglobin, deoxyhemoglobin, methemoglobin, and carboxyhemoglobin. Know about the affinity of oxygen versus carboxyhemoglobin for uh, uh, oxygen, oxyhemoglobin versus carboxyhemoglobin. Uh, know what anemia or polycythemia is, what erythropoietin does, where it is uh, made. Uh, understand or have a knowledge of loading reactions and unloading reactions for oxygen and CO2 in the capillaries, both tissue and in the lungs. You're going to need to know what uh, changes take place in the loading and unloading with temperature, pH, and uh, 2, 3 DPG, and the oxygen transport. What difference does it make in somebody that's anemic or at high altitude, or with a mother and a fetus, and uh, why the fetal hemoglobin uh, doesn't necessarily react to 2,3 DPG and what difference that makes in the oxygen transfer uh, to the fetus. Know what he fetal hemoglobin is, uh, be able to contrast sickle cell anemia from thalassemias, uh, why might they be good in some cases. Know what myoglobin is, why it's in the muscle, why it's in the heart, what it does. Uh, how does the structure differentiate for a different, is different than hemoglobin. Uh, in carbon dioxide transport, know what the chloride shift is. Uh, how is carbon dioxide transported? What's the bulk? What's the buffer, buffer system? Uh, what does carbonic anhydrase do and where does carbonic acid come into the, into the picture? Know what the chloride shift is. Acid-base balance, know what alkalosis is versus acidosis versus respiratory versus metabolic. And realize that an acidosis in a person is not actually acidic, uh, but it's more acidic than normal. Your normal pH is 7.4, below 7.35 is acidosis, above 7.45 is alkalosis. And be able to discuss these with... Uh, in the terms of metabolic and respiratory alkalosis and acidosis. Um, know what a hyperventilation or hypoventilation will do uh, for acidosis or alkalosis. Uh, we've already tested on lactate and oxygen debt. Uh, know what happens to a person who's at a high, high altitude, how they acclimatize. It happens with erythropoietin, with red cell production, with 2,3-DPG. Uh, be familiar with how gas might be. It might be harder to exchange gas and why they need oxygen at a higher altitude. No, and that's at 16.42. That will, uh, you know, there's a ch table there that goes, uh, goes into it pretty well. Okay. Let's look at this. Know what the alveoli are, uh, know how many, how much area, kind of the structure, know about uh, the 
the conduction system for her versus the exchange, ventilation, inspiration, expiration, the mechanics of breathing. What gets the air in, what gets the air out, and why does it work? Gas exchange in the lungs, uh, and how the breathing is regulated. Uh, inspiratory and expiratory neurons, uh, activity of the medulla, the pneumotaxic centers, and the pons. Uh, know about hemoglobin and oxygen transport. Acid base in the blood, exercise, uh, hypo, hyperventilation, metabolic, uh, and uh, respiratory alkalosis and acidosis. And that should do you pretty well. Make sure you know the review activities and the summaries at the end of each chapter. Uh, and to, if you can uh, handle the test your understanding questions, that might be... Uh, that would probably go a long way to helping you on this test. Okay, thank you very much. I will email these out to you.